Hello, this is Dom. And Tom. From Black Tate Studios. <laughs> and welcome to our little uh, hobby lock-in, as it were. Uh, I think this is episode four now. It so is number four. Going well. Most consistent um, series yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the most consistent joint series we've got. Yes, yes. Okay, um, joint series. That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so for you guys who are just tuning in now, basically it's our, it's our little chat, a little get-together we had. Um, by the the wonders of zoom yes. and uh, we just go through a few little topics and uh, go through what we're currently working on uh mm -hmm. in, in each night so what we ask you guys is you sit back you enjoy do some hobby if you've got anything you want to talk uh want us to talk about in the next episode in the comments below and we will happily talk about anything so mm. yeah we can go through those so tom first up how are you i'm all right just finished work week so been quite a long week to be fair um, obviously with all the restrictions stuff going at the moment it's been quite busy at work um, so I've been doing a lot of IT based stuff as is my job obviously um, but um, getting a lot of home workers sorted out all that kind of jazz and um, just keeping the business ticking over uh, while we can really so uh, yeah happy times yeah happy times. Um, and yourself Oh yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's, it's great, thank you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's gone. It's gone all right, thank you. I've uh, had to do a little bit of hobby, got some bits done. Uh, so for now, just nodding on really. Um, so what hobby are you working on tonight, Thomas? Well, having just finished my demon prints, which I'll just uh, see here. You probably won't see it too well, but there you go. Look, it, 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 he's gone. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Can always pop his up in Instagram. Yes, I will. Actually, it's a very good point. I haven't done that yet. I shall do that soon. So yeah, he's done. Uh, and basically, I've finished all but four of my Blight Lord Terminators. So those are the four that I am working on tonight, um, which I hopefully have finished in the next couple of days because this I've saved the easiest one till last. This has got the least amount of flesh on it and the least amount of extra bits on it. So um, <laughs> hopefully it'll be a fairly plain sailing on the painting front with these ones. Um, but yeah, once they're done, that is my... First section of Death Guard done, and then on to some other little bits I've got in a box down here, uh, which I'll go into when we, when we get to them, I suppose. So, uh, yeah. And what are cool you thing. on at the moment? Well, I have just recently finished my uh, last Venom Crawler. That's uh, uh, three yes. Venom Crawlers for the 83rd, and uh, I am working on my Rhino. So, ah. this one, I've done one coat of red so far. <laughs> I've got another coat to go, but uh, yeah, there you go. Like Good. Uh, and then I've been doing a bit on this one. Just slowly getting there. But it takes a while. No airbrush. It's all by brush. So it's taking time. Masters of the brush. Those people have played for a long time. Rhinos are not the most exciting thing in the world. Right. <laughs> no. Box with tracks. Um, so I am but they are fairly easy, at least. Yeah. Yeah, they're just time consuming, I think. In the grand um, scheme of things, yeah. It's, it's more of a thoughtless process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't really have to think too much about it, no. to be honest. Um, so I'm, I'm happily plodding on with that. Um, they're all kind of a little bit different. Still got to spray this one. And uh, before the uh, start of recording, myself and Tom were just saying about uh, paint rationing <laughs> as a topic we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> like before this thing went into lockdown, I got myself a bit of ag wax. I was like, oh, I need some of that. Uh, I've got some, I can't, I can't remember, I've got some Wazdacker as well. Yeah, I need a bit of that as well. But then I was like, oh, what about Typhus? Ooh. What about my other ones? So some of them I'm running a bit low on. You're not so out of corrosion, are you? I've still got some. I've got two it's, pots it's, of it here. Oh dear, it's, it's <laughs> a gunky bit at the bottom, too. <laughs> The real, real thick stuff. Yeah, um, but out. yeah, except for that hobby-wise, I've like um, supply-wise, I've got some super glue, I've got some poly cement, I've got a few scalpel blades. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty good at the moment. Tom, anything you're running low on? Um, I mean, bit? the current paint I'm using to do a lot of the metal work on these uh, light law, which is my uh, coppery. I think it's what's it called? Hasbit copper? Yeah, hashit copper. That's one. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I've probably got enough to finish these four models off, I reckon, and then I'm going to have to stop doing Death Guard for a bit. <laughs> and now I'll have to move on to a uh, another model range, which I have more paints for, which is probably going to be my sister battle, I think. 
um, because I've got I only just bought all that uh, before uh, shortly before everything kind of got sort of ground to a halt so I've got plenty of stuff for those ones so yeah um, fair enough so I'll probably stick with that no cool 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 yeah it's one of those things where it just think oh yeah people panic buying toilet roll and like, pasta and rice you should be like panic buying paint and spray yeah. and glue that's where it's at Get, get, get the paint in. <laughs> Retrospect. <laughs> I need more agro exertion. <laughs> I mean, I've got one, one spray of silver paint, and I, uh, I don't know how much longer I've got that for because I've got a rhino, uh, I've got 10 chaos marines I need to do. That's right. As long, as, long as it sounds like there's a little bomb. bit in there, Dom, you can always squeeze a bit more out. <laughs> Hold oh, it upside no. down, you know. <laughs> Every angle. Every angle you can possibly think of. <laughs> yeah. But lucky for my uh, my chaos demons, I use uh, black anyway. So it's worse than worse. I've got I've got that to, to keep nice. me going. Yeah, some, some green somewhere for guard. I'm not sure I've got that many guard models to make at the moment. But yeah, fun times. So Tom, shall we go through some of the comments from the videos yeah. uh, from our previous video? Yeah. Okay. Um, not too many, but they're fairly simple ones. So um, I'll go on first. So first of all, first of all, John pointed out that the reveal was actually on Saturday, not Sunday. I think we mentioned it was on Sunday in our last video. So, um, yeah, but, we did. sorry about that. We was obviously misread, or I misread, I think. Um, but we will be probably both watching that tomorrow, because um, we're recording this on Friday night. Um, the video will be out tonight as well, if you're watching this on Friday. Um, almost live. Almost live, yeah. Maybe we'll try that one day interesting what could possibly go yeah. wrong <laughs> uh but yes we'll be probably watching that with a couple of other friends i think um and then sort of taking some notes and then doing a video probably after that with our kind of reaction to it as long as there's some noteworthy reaction in there of course you know, it just depend on uh what's revealed yeah definitely i'm hoping yeah. for some more 40k stuff obviously so i think it will be 40k i'd be very surprised if it's eight sigma um it could be a new specialist game, possibly. You know, could be a new specialist maybe. game. It could be a new box set. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, if if it is forty k, obviously I'm hoping for chaos, chaos love. <laughs> Renegades and heretics. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, it's not going to be Renegades and Heretics. Which is a I nice segue into one of the other questions, or one of the other things that were sort of someone was obviously uh, reacting to what we were saying about kind of what we were hoping for Renegades and Heretics, and sort of saying that you know they don't think there's a lot of they're not selling a lot of stuff in Forge World and you know, prospects don't look very good for Renegade players right now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. But what's your reaction to that, Dom? Well, no, it, it is very true. If you go on Forge World and you uh, refine the uh, Renegades and Heretics with like nine entries, and I think two of them, like Renegades and Heretics, can't actually take. It's like a bit of teasing kind of, ooh, you could have this if you're a loyalist. Um, <laughs> but um, I do think they can GW, uh, not Forge World, GW are going to do a uh, traitor guard uh, slash renegade and heretic range, which kind of uh, I'd use my renegades and heretics as whatever model range they release. A bit like having uh, old school talent as your, your Astro Medicarum. So you might mm. not be able to get the models as easily anymore, but you can still use them. So yeah, I'm not overly fussed if they lose it. I just a bit of a shame if you've got unique units for your renegades and heretics. You know, disappear in the chaos uh, yeah. in the traitor guard codex which I, I do believe it is it is inevitable i think it is going to mm -hmm. be coming at some point i agree i think actually the fact that they've pulled the models off is actually more of a positive sign that they were doing something else for them because i don't think they would scrap such a a range of uh something that's quite prevalent in the 40k universe I yeah think it exactly be, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to do do that no. um okay. So, and you look at a lot of the um, artwork uh, that GW keep pumping out all the time, and just, um, renegades and heretics or traitors are uh, infantry and stuff. Basic mortal stuff is that's appear quite quite frequently in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think it's definitely in the yeah uh, the line to get released at some point. But obviously, we will have to wait and see, as they are normally quite tight lipped until nearer the time. 
so it's quite hard to find out information. I mean, obviously they do these preview pictures, and um, you know, if one of them could be potentially be Renegades and Heretics somewhere, we just haven't noticed. But you maybe. Know. Uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I do find myself looking at every artwork and every release now for that sneaky unit. <laughs> Praying, please, please be what I want. <laughs> well, it's it's ever it since the um, Vigilus one came out, mm. and they had the Venom Crawler like appearing in a, a doorway. Ah, uh, yeah, the sneaky background. little background shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, oh, Venom Crawler, that's a new thing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, GW getting quite sneaky. A bit like Where's Wally. Yeah, I quite, I quite like it personally. I like that style. I think it's nice. It gives everyone the gives everyone a little bit of speculation. Everyone gets talking about it, and um, it's quite interesting to sort of think about what they're possibly going to be bringing out and doing. Um, and also, the fact that I love the fact that they some of these things maybe been revealed over a year ago secretly, and you, then suddenly you go back and go, oh, so that's yeah, what that all, all along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants to be that smart guy, don't they? The one that's kind of like... I, I told you. I told you. Yeah, I can't believe you didn't know that. You didn't believe me, did you? No. I'm wrong 90% of the time, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'll be popping theories out everywhere. Eventually, I'll be what? <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I hope and I believe there will be something out for them. And I must admit, even I'm quite tempted for... Um, possibly for my Night Lords or... Um, uh, Nurgle stuff to sort of have a kind of a supporting force like I did for my Templars because I think I like the idea of having some Renegade Traitor Guard as well. Just gets more playing options, I think, um, for Chaos. You know, especially yeah, there's for always some nice stuff out there that you can kind of, especially for Chaos, that you've got like you can have demons, you can have other legions, you can have fallen angels, um, which is something less up uh, what kind of appealed to me. I was going through my uh. My bits box, and I found loads of 30k um, Dark Angel shoulder pads that originally were going to go into 30k. So I bought loads of 30k Dark Angel bits. Oh, um, yeah. These uh, shoulder pads and some uh, angels if I wanted to have a little uh, little squad of them. Add a bit of character to each of them. It's quite nice. Plus, I use my guard and my chaos. And Cypher yeah. and the Fallen could be my joint factor. The, the Fallen Guard. Well, they're, they're still loyalists. The Kitrin. Oh, the Kitrin. Ah, oh, them, them people. Yeah. Them Brilliant kitchen. administration. Brilliant <laughs> Saving planet after planet with balancing the books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to get on the wrong side of one of their audits. <laughs> no. <laughs> they back it up with a las gun. <laughs> yeah. That was a running joke um, between uh, myself and uh, Sam, who's been on the channel with the Torians. My one, uh, my guys were brilliant at administration, and uh, his were called yeah, Praetorians. Yeah. Spent too much money on their clothing, Praetorians, that's why I reckon. Yeah, yeah, that's where really, that financial black hole goes. They it's... didn't budget properly, no. and kind of said they don't budget properly. <laughs> oh, that would be quite an interesting water stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Get the old cogitator going, yeah. Was uh, well, that all our comments? Thomas? Uh, we have one more from War Venom, who we've uh, had down before as well. Um, plays, he's got a lovely Night Lord army, which I've played before on the channel. Um, and he was just commenting on, obviously, we, we spoke about the Winters game that we had um, a little while back. Probably, it must be over two years ago now, is it? Maybe? Yeah, well, I shared it recently on our Facebook. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just sort of saying how you know, he, was, he just wondered if it was inklings of us planning something. Um, to play again. Uh, we have no uh, apocalypse collaboration games planned at the moment. I suppose all kind of collaborations are kind of at the moment on hold. Mm. Um, uh, as we, as myself and Tom can't even be in the same room together at the moment. No. It's a bit hard to do uh, sort of collaboration <laughs> games. <laughs> Nothing to do with the coronavirus, though. No, it's um, actually a restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> Tom is very touchy feely. Spoiler for you all, and uh, don't think it's appropriate for the. Well, Dom uh, gets very uncomfortable, so that's just just yeah. the way it is. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll work on it, so maybe we can film some games soon. <laughs> yeah, Tom's currently in counselling for his uh, yes, feelingness. I just I just love too much. <laughs> yeah, what's the name of the group? <laughs> 
<laughs> love too much. <laughs> but, um, anyway, slightly back on topic. <laughs> he was all, but he did say that if we were to plan another game, he would he would like to have seen the Night Lords and the eighty third War Host versus the Thirteenth and the Penitent Forge. Yeah, yeah. Let's get let's get a proper word bearer army on that channel. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> uh-huh. The other the others have been good. Um, but it would be good to get uh, obviously armies from both channels, so the eighty third mm. for for Martin, your Night Lords, um, against obviously Winters, he's got a whole story for his characters. It'd be great if I could decapitate a few of them and put their heads <laughs> on spikes and uh, ride them around on my uh, land raiders. Yeah, or I mean yeah, maybe, maybe we should send a gauntlet to Winters and then tell him to slap himself in the face with it and say that we challenge him. Yeah teach him a lesson yeah. also the geeks guys be quite good at some point you know it's ah, the yeah. problem is is, is uh, travel really in mm. all honesty it'd be quite good if we uh we had some decent collaboration people nearby and uh yeah doubles one would be awesome yes um because you know we love big games like all i'm all about and rolling dice and having a couple yes. of beers yeah because uh, what people probably don't know is we actually had one planned last year i think it was but unfortunately we had some <clears throat> i think family circumstances come up at the time and we couldn't make said date so we were a bit disappointed but hopefully we can get another one on the cards at some point um yeah just so we can yeah because I, I must admit it was it is one of our memorable games that one um but in all seriousness it was a really good day and just good fun no no arguing no nothing just just solid good fun so um, yeah and those are, the, those are the type of pockets games that uh, always stand out, especially with some good moments in it as well. So I love, love facing down the old uh, Titan. So um, hopefully in the near future, once all this stuff's uh, sorted itself out, we can get something in the books. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we should do a, a, might sort of go fund me for uh, uh, Warhound for the 83rd. Oh, you need, oh, I see. <laughs> you want a Reaver then? <laughs> well, Reaver would be nice. But, you know, I'm being realistic here. Um, so, per note below, would you contribute to all my uh, GoFundMe? If I was to get one for my uh, Titan. Well, Dom, you must go for the Emperor now. I mean, the Emperor. I mean, it's just yeah. Wow. Well, well, we'll stuff, see. Yeah, if you... <laughs> you know. Just waiting I mean, for that with one the card. Titan, says yeah, I'll I'd do it. Quite easily take on uh, Winters and his uh, Titan. I could always uh, bring my Warhound as well. Yeah, if we yeah play that's that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. I could sorry. hang some skulls on it if it makes you makes it work, I suppose. But uh, no. Yeah, I would have to probably deface it. I can tell you Get one thing right spoilers. now. I am not painting that thing again. <laughs> I did three paint jobs on that. And uh I mean that's another good thing that I could mention actually. I mean obviously four drilled items of very high expense quality and size. Um if you are thinking of getting one straight off the bat as your first like four job model, I would probably suggest don't do that. Because <laughs> I think Dom will remember when I bought that thing and I was woefully un- underprepared <laughs> for A, assembling it and B, Way painting out of your it. Comfort zone. <laughs> I was well out of my comfort zone. <laughs> it took me a good, it must have been three or four years before I got to the point where I was like, yeah, I think I can just about... Um, <laughs> put that on a battlefield now <laughs> yeah bless him but um i would yeah, love to a bit if, intimidating it is and the problem is once i had assembled it i really couldn't do much to disassemble and remake um which is a shame but, but i don't really fancy prizing it open and breaking it because uh, you know forge world resin has a bit of a reputation of um snapping once glued um or pulling other parts away once you super glued it so um well yeah you know, I'm, I'm happy with it now it's good enough for a centerpiece from an apocalypse game anyway um in my opinion but yeah uh just be careful when you buy your four job models for the first time just get something that you uh, feel comfortable doing as a recommendation yeah i mean some people probably could jump into it straight away but certain skill yeah depending on what skill level you're at definitely think about what you're buying and um so was that actually your first forge world model then no it wasn't my first one but it was, i think it was the first major purchase i made from them um, like I think, you know, I think I've had uh, lots of single one-off models. Nothing massively. That was my first big kit I bought. I think. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think mine was the um, uh, Armageddon Basilisk. Ah. Nice. I'm not going to say I was uh, slightly disappointed with the warping, but uh, I think over time they've uh, definitely got a lot better. Mm. The, uh, the cast and the quality. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. I do have another sit, uh, sit in chat question that was uh, ah. via the uh, Facebook Messenger. Oh, I missed miss that. Yeah. Well, no, no, this is to my personal one. Oh, though. fine, fine. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, right. Which model from any army that you guys don't play do you really love the look of and uh, would be the reason to start that army? Ooh. Mm. Any particular model that would make you start an army? I'm just thinking. I'll tell you what Gilliman. I do like. Gilliman. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, if I'm totally honest, I wouldn't put it down to one model. But forge roll model wise, um, I really like some of the guard tanks. Okay, uh, anyone just, in particular? Um, what's the one you got recently? The was it the Mal the dual cannon? Um, the Minotaur. Minotaur, that's the one. Sorry, yeah. Or the um, Minotaur. Maybe. Minotaur, yeah. So that I mean, you know, that and some of the artillery pieces. I really, I've, I've always really liked the look of them. And mm. um, I mean, actually, to be honest, that's probably one of the ones that inspired me to do my guard army because mine was going to be an artillery based army. Um, and I've basically, I haven't bought any forge roll for it um, yet. Uh, however, if it was something that was going to kick me off to start it, I mean, one of the reasons for starting it was actually thinking, oh, I want to get some of the larger artillery pieces, like the Minotaur and the, um, I'm trying to think of the other ones they had, the slightly stubbier mortar one. Uh, you've got Conqu the Medusa? Medusa. Yeah, I think it was the Medusa. And the you've one. got the uh, Colossus. I Colossus, think. that was the other one, yeah. Because I had an idea of what I wanted to do. And I do remember actually originally going, oh, I'm going to get a few of these. And I think, did they stop doing a couple of them? Or am I thinking of something uh, else? Or might be thinking of something else. I don't think you can get the, I don't think you can get the Medusa. A lot of people no. convert it. But you can get mm. the, um, the standalone artillery piece, but not the actual uh, Yes, Medusa that's right, it. yeah. Because my original idea was, I think, to have three Medusas and um, some of the Colossuses, just to sort mm. of, and then have a massive wave of infantry at the front. That was kind of my theme for the the style of army I was going for. Because um, they're supposed to be supporting the Black Templars in in crusade fights and stuff like that. So the idea was to have a wall of infantry with a hell of a lot of um, firepower firing overhead to give them kind of room to run forward. That was. Um, Hence why I play Katachan rules as well. <laughs> for, the, uh, for the plus one strength to Garzman, because uh, my Garzman want to get into combat because they want to prove themselves so they might get picked to become a Black Templar. That's their, um, that's their thing. Well, yeah. in the uh, Greater Good book, Tom, that I, I will lend you at some point, there uh -huh. are some lovely uh, doctrines you can give your regiment. And some Ooh. of them are very like combat honour-based. Nice. So you can increase the AP of your melee weapon by one. <laughs> Does that count to guards and bayonets? Yeah. Bayonets and then oh. <laughs> <laughs> So strength for guardsmen and bayonets. Um, but yeah, that, if, that, if that was um, kind of my thing, I think those are the ones, some of the models that I would really like to get my hands on and paint because um, I actually enjoy painting tanks myself quite a bit. Some of my favourite mm -hmm. things I've painted. You know, if you take my, like, my casters assault rams I've done, and uh, my two uh, sto well, Storm Sword and uh, uh, Storm Sword and Storm Lord, that's the one. Storm Sword and Storm Lord, the two shorter range variants of the uh, Bane Blade chassis. Um, yeah, so stuff like that. I, I love those kind of things. It's really, really cool. And uh, mm -hmm. about you, Dom, anything that uh, strikes your fancy or get you going on an army? You know what? It's, uh, what I really love. Um, I'm going to take two different armies here. Ooh. One. Yeah, I know. It's going to be the um, uh, is it the jackal or the uh, jeans dealer cult? Oh, okay. This is, I'm trying to think what that one is. Um, the little, uh, the little, dude, yeah, the, the bike. Oh, the is bikes. It, yeah, it is the bikes, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure you're right. It's, it, it, yeah, I know. I know what you're. Reminds me so much of. Uh, you're going to um, say generals, aren't you? Yeah, you can't look at generals. <laughs> GLA. 
k 47s for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fun times, fun times. Yeah, oh dear. Yeah, I, I just think I, I love the aesthetic and the drinky the cult. There's a bit of artwork in, like the said book, um, the Great Good, of a um, traitor chimera, and it's got like all these um, Blue Brother uh, mm. guardsmen on it, and it looks really nice. And I was, I was even looking the other night, I was like, oh, that'd be quite cool. And then I was like, I want to go running with heretics. Good God. <laughs> I want an army, maybe with a lower model count. And Gene C. LeCoult, in my experience, playing against them many a time, definitely do not have a low model count. No, I think um, that's, yeah. Uh, maybe Custodes? <laughs> yeah, or Custodes. Yeah. Uh, and the other model, once again, would be the uh, Giant Squiggoff. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that model. It's, it is a good one. I mean, even the baby yeah. one's actually pretty nice, but the big one yeah, is just yeah. like the icing. I think I've only seen one in person. And that was mm-hmm. our um, that massive forty k game we had um, with Warwick. With, uh, yeah, Commissar Warwick. Commissar Warwick. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that thing was just immense, uh, real hard to take down as well. If I recall, I think it was going for a few turns. Um, I think until the storm saw start eating its hide alive. But um, yeah, I agree. Uh, it's a lovely model, mm. absolutely lovely. But also, like, the orcs have got such a brilliant range of, you know, some of this, the, the basic boys now, say, are a little bit dated, um, unfortunately. But when you get to, uh, like, the orc fighter bombers, I was thinking about those earlier. I was like, they are nice models, aren't they, really? I mean, yes. you see them all the time now, but it's like you've got the aesthetics of, um, like, an old school um, Soviet MiG with the, <laughs> the, the nose on it. Also, like, a Japanese Zero fighter. There's some mm. really nice stuff there you can do with them and um yeah i think orcs got some nice models that i definitely would uh, consider doing orcs yeah i think um if you i mean to be honest i actually really like some of the um just the orc full drill stuff actually just in general mm. uh, there's not really that many bad orc models from full drilled i think because they really extend the range out nicely um i think some of it got removed a little while ago mm-hmm. but you know i think it was the some of the walkers got removed didn't they um yeah like the the cool dreadnought kind of thing yeah the, kind of the mech walker wasn't it whatever it was um the ones that like they're out of uh, world of warcraft yes yeah, old... yeah 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 i mean to be honest they would, they would have been directly contending with things like the gaw the morkanaut or the gorkanaut i suppose um mm-hmm. the normal range and hence probably why they got gotten rid of um but they had a very different aesthetic actually to those models um so but yeah yeah, some of some of that stuff's so cool. But, uh, it's one of the things that probably inspired me to pick up some of my orc stuff. I would imagine um, we should get the orcs out again sometime. We need to pick up their new book when I can. You should, and maybe a big certain orc, maybe. Yes, um, I just don't know how it'd fit in my thing. <laughs> Much more of a, a walker can kind of person, but I suppose yeah, he, he, he'd go in there. He's big enough. <laughs> yeah, he's just got some bodyguards. A couple yeah. of uh, kill cans can be his bodyguards. Yeah, but the same. Sure, Fracker would be too happy with kill cans being his bodyguards. But... No, the kill cans the most reliable <laughs> unit in the Hawk Codex. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I just, I just, I always look at them and think, how do they even walk? They just rattle themselves apart. <laughs> Well, if they think they can walk, they can walk. Yeah, I mean, that's why I paint mine red good. as well, so they go faster. So that's, uh, that's a true tactic, you know, that, that works. Um, Does it? Yep. I'm sticking with it. Oh, God. Just give it a go, mate. Oh, I still remember playing your, your Orc Army back in the day. I still remember that game we had uh, playing on your lounge floor. And I was, playing my, I was playing my guard for the first time in a big Outside game. The and, and you had one orc with a stick bomb. And he casually, tank bombs, yeah. tank bus casually worked his way through my entire back line. <laughs> I think I stopped Never playing shortly after that. <laughs> yeah. Never let a knob work through your back line. <laughs> no, that's yeah, it's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Ah, never get old. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, floor hammer. Oh, God, those are good days, actually. I remember them. So a few shoe boxes yeah. and some books. <laughs> yeah, I remember like back in the day playing uh, Necromunda with uh, 
VHS boxes. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. I mean that's that's what proper wargaming is all about. So um, guys, have you ever played 40k with uh, VHS boxes or do you know what VHS you know? is? Yeah, or DVD or <laughs> DVD <laughs> cassette. <laughs> That's oh another one. I'll tell you what, it is a story about cassette and, and wargaming. I um, remember having a dark elf army in Warhammer Fantasy and taking it to school and taking it around my mates in a uh, cassette carrying box. It was, I, I feel sorry for my models that are in there. I had like cassettes kind of spaced out so they could put, I could put new lips in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I must admit, though, because obviously, you, you, yeah, your 40k days go back a bit further than mine, because uh, obviously you were one of the chief reasons I got into 40k, and we didn't actually meet until secondary school, so it was a little bit later for me, and I think you were playing it a little bit before, weren't you? Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember lots of my uh, early days of 40k and Warhammer Fantasy, so yeah, it was some good memories there. Some good stuff. I think uh, but one of my first units I remember uh, getting was the old plastic World Eater uh, Berserkers. Not the, the ones that you still have currently in uh, Games Workshop, but the ones where they'd have a chainsaw in one hand that moulded onto the body. And then they'd have a bolt pistol in the other one that you could click on. I love those models. <laughs> they were brilliant. I think I've still got one somewhere. I might hang one up. So oh, I, I, yeah. I think I, I think the very first Warhammer's model I got were actually Vostrans, oddly enough, a very long time ago. And I didn't really get into them that much back then. And I, I think I sold them, shame, because um, I actually really liked that army. Um, and then I think I did a normal Cadian style army, I think, as my first one. Didn't really get into them. And I think then it was um, Sisters of Battle, wasn't it? Yep. I think, yep, and I, I, think the, yeah, I think the reason I did them was because no one was playing them. That was the, literally the only reason I, I think I started collecting them actually because no one I knew was actually using them. And I thought, oh, this would be a bit of fun. I actually quite enjoyed them back then. I had quite a sizable army. I remember the old Metal Exorcist. Oh, oh, that was a brick. Very nice model, but an absolute <laughs> brick. You could you could probably bludgeon someone to death with that that thing, that organ. It's it so big. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, and back in the day with Games Workshop, this is what that retro hammer is that you at the back of your white dwarf you'd have like for instance your Terminator captain would be in the in the back and then they'd have the old lead one. So each arm and the backpack and the head or not the head, but the, the arms and the backpack or the banner pole would have its own individual skew code. So you oh, could yeah. order order the parts. I kinda of missed and, that actually. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice to sort of I mean, obviously, I understand why they probably would find it quite difficult these days to do it because uh, having all the individual parts on order would be quite a logistical nightmare, I'd imagine. Um, it's just selling a sprue for the stuff's a lot easier, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's more money and uh, not doing it that way, isn't it? Yeah. Really, if we're going to be slight skeptical, uh, you you know, buy the whole uh, whole box for that those extra uh, <laughs> arms or backpacks. Uh, rather than ordering them separately, so yeah, I mean, most are pretty good value to be honest. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, there might be some out there that aren't very good value. Um, but like for instance, if I take the, the the Black Templar upgrade kit, I think that's pretty good value for money. The amount of stuff you get in that. Um, I mean, admittedly, you end up with quite a few duplicates of the ones you never end up using. But um, I'll never run out of Rhino doors. Um, if only I wanted some Rhinos. But <laughs> I got some Rhinos. Just sure, told me I'd have quite happily taken a couple off you and used them as captured uh, rhinos. I'm sure you've done that with some of the models I've given you before, actually. Haven't you? I think you've done that with a tank <laughs> and a vindicator, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty I've sure. Definitely done it. Oh, I remember with uh, your old Lamb Raider Crusader, one of your first ones. You uh, you gave it to me, and I turned it into an old battle wagon. Oh God! Oh, gosh, I've still Jesus. got that. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, still got that. I, I, actually, probably, I think I've forgotten I bought that. So obviously I've got uh, two Land Raider Crusaders still and one normal Land Raider for my Templars. Um, yeah, this is the old metal one. Yes. Oh, I think I've got one of the old ones with the metal sponsons on it. Um, 
still knocking about somewhere. Yeah, pretty sure I've got one and then one plastic one. So, yes, yeah, so, oh, that was those were weird days when they sort of did the um, you know, the plastic model, and then they some of the sponsors like, oh, have some metal sponsors, and you're like, oh you want me to glue this to this to you and make it stay on okay <laughs> <laughs> i will definitely stay on it won't come off so. yeah never it'll never never after a slight movement across the battlefield just drop off and you go <sighs> <laughs> oh, there's the days it's all a bit easier nowadays though to be fair for models i mean they make the kit so well now um yeah, definitely but yeah definitely so, what you, uh, so anyway, that's another good question for everyone out there. What are your most fondest memories of hobby and sort of when you got into it? That'd be quite an interesting thing to hear from people. You know, what your, what your most yeah, what was your first model that you yeah, purchased? Yeah, first model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Games Workshop or Forge World. Yeah. That's, and did you ever play Floorhammer? Yeah, that's uh, another good one. If you didn't, you didn't live. Like you didn't live. In fact, you need to go and do it right now. If you listen to this, yeah. just stop everything, stop the video, play some Floorhammer, yeah. come back and tell us how you got on with it. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, keeping <in> her back. <laughs> uh, we probably shouldn't wait. I think it might be bad. <laughs> Let us know in the next video <laughs> how that went. Yeah, um, if you're still here, if you've gone already because you're so excited, sorry, because uh, we'll, we'll, we're probably about to wrap this up now. I think. Um, so I think we've had a good. We might have even gone a little over half an hour actually. I think we've gone almost forty minutes tonight. Nice. I'm, well, I'm going to go with some uh, Mandalorian. So ah. I will see you guys later. Yes. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and please leave a comment below if you liked it. Give us a little thumbs up. And we're doing this basically to help everybody, including ourselves, um, with the uh, uh, lockdown and the self isolation lots of people are going through at the moment. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. So yes. this is Dom and Tom and Black Toad Studios. And we'll see you next time. Indeed. Take, Take care. care everyone.